Good morning. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. We are in the study called The Law of Love. The Law of Love. And this morning, there's something on my heart that I want to share again with you that I shared last week. And let's go back to 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1. It says, if I speak in the tongues of men and of angels. Now, the word tongues means languages, the languages of men and of angels, but have not love. I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. Now, this says there are languages of men and of angels. There are earthly languages and there are heavenly languages and God gives us the gift of tongues after we've been born again but you have to receive it by faith you actually have to seek it ask for it and believe for it and I strongly encourage you that if you have never received the gift of speaking in other tongues for your personal prayer life this will help you to pray more effectively. It'll help you to hear from God. It'll help you to get answers and understanding of things that you need. I encourage you to receive this gift immediately. I encourage you go to my website and listen to the series called the baptism in the Holy Spirit and the benefits of speaking in tongues. It will answer your questions and help you to receive the gift of speaking in other tongues. And now then, Yesterday, before we closed, I was starting to read to you a list of scriptures in the New Testament that use the words one another or each other, one another or each other. And there's a lot of scriptures in the New Testament that talk about how we are to treat one another or each other. And so I started reading to you. This list, and let me just start at the top again, just to refresh your memory. And in John 13, verses 34 and 35, it says, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. Verse 35, By this all men will know that you are my disciples, if you love one another. Notice three times in two verses, it uses the phrase, love one another. And so that's very important. And then it's also showing this is how the world will know that we belong to Christ, that we are his disciples and we are his children because we love one another. Then in John fifteen twelve, it says, my command is this, love each other as I have loved you, love each other. Now, perhaps another translation, I didn't look at it in others, but it could also say love one another, love each other as I have loved you. And then Mark nine fifty. that's five zero. It says, be at peace with each other. Be at peace with each other. You know, that means there should be no strife and no division in your relationship With other people. Part of walking in love. And we're going to get to this later. Is to continually forgive. And let love cover over a multitude of sins. And do not allow the spirit of division. Division separates people. Don't allow it. So you walk in love to maintain relationship, harmony. Now, you're not going to always keep, for example, fellowship, but you should always keep relationship. You might not always want to hang around and be buddy-buddy with people that you don't get along well with, but you do love them and keep relationship with them. You might not be around them and having fellowship. Fellowship is being together, spending time together. And you don't have to spend time together with people that you don't easily get along with, but you do have to love them and be at peace with them. So be at peace with each other. And then Romans 12:10, be devoted to one another. 
That's the first part of the verse. The second part of the verse says, and honor one another above yourselves. Now, this is another characteristic of love. Love honors other people. One of the ways that you love others is to honor them. One of the ways that you love others is that you honor them. And honoring is both in word and action. You can honor a person by giving them something. You can honor a person by treating them respectfully, preferring them, letting them go ahead, letting them get the best piece, letting them go first, letting them take the better part, whatever. That is honoring other people. And as I mentioned yesterday, pride hates to honor other people. Pride hates to honor others. Pride wants to be honored, but pride hates to honor others. Humility will honor others above yourself. So again, humility and love go hand in hand. You cannot walk in love without walking in humility because you've got to crucify your flesh and put your flesh under in order to walk in love. And that is also walking in humility and walking in love and walking in humility means honoring other people, preferring others, giving others the best part, letting them go first, giving them praise, letting them receive the praise in a situation. So love honors and humility honors honors other people. Romans 14, 13, stop passing judgment on one another. This is another big part of love. Love does not judge. Love does not criticize. Love does not slander or speak bad about other people. This is huge. It's a huge part of it. So love does not judge and love honors. Others. Romans 15, 7, Romans 15, 7 says, accept one another, accept one another. And then Romans 15, 14, instruct one another. Now that, of course, has to be in humility. You don't try being boss and tell everybody what, what to do. That's not what it's talking about. But it's it's a humble Instruction and helping others. Romans 16, 16, greet one another. Galatians 5, 13, serve one another in love. Here again, this is another attribute of love or characteristic of love. Love serves. But again, it's also another characteristic of humility. Humility serves. Pride hates to serve. Humility serves. And love serves others. Love serves others. So again, Galatians 5.13, serve one another in love. And, And let me point out, this is not based on gender. You know, sometimes there's an idea that one person is supposed to be served and the other is just supposed to serve sometimes it's not based on position necessarily and where even in a working relationship even a boss employee relationship there is it should not only be that the lower serves the higher position But remember what Jesus said, that I have come among you as one who serves. I am your Lord. I am your teacher. But I have come among you as one who serves. So even when you are in the leadership, pride wants to just be served and tell everybody what to do. But humility will also serve 
those around you and those that are under you. So this is a character, the, this is a characteristic of love and a characteristic of humility that you serve. And then Galatians chapter six, verse two, carry each other's burdens, carry each other's burdens. Then Ephesians four, two, Ephesians four, two, be patient, bearing with one another in love. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Well, this parallels first Corinthians 13. 4. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 says, love is patient. So love is patient. So impatience is getting out of love. When you get impatient with other people, whether it's family, spouse, or children, whether it's coworkers, whether it's being in the store and being impatient with a clerk or other people, whether it's in a restaurant or any other place, public place. Love is patient. Love is patient. And then Ephesians 4, verse 32, be kind and compassionate to one another. This is another parallel to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, which we call the love chapter, verse 4, love is kind. Remember, we read that. We started with 1 Corinthians 13, 4. Love endures long and is patient and kind. Patience and kindness toward other people is another big characteristic of walking in love. And then Ephesians 4.32 goes on to say, forgive each other, forgive each other. Now we're going to talk about that more later, as I've said. So we won't go into detail now. Ephesians 5.21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ, submit to one another. You know, a lot of people have read the next verse. It says, wives, submit to your husbands. But they have ignored this verse just before it, which says in verse 21, submit to one another. So actually, yes, wives, submit to your husbands. But as Christians, we all submit to one another. That means that what is submission? Submission is yielding, yielding to the desire and will of another. What does that mean? Love does not demand its own way. Selfishness is demanding. Pride is demanding. Pride and selfishness are very demanding. I want my way. I want it like this. Pride and selfishness are very demanding. Love and humility do not demand. Love and humility do not demand your own way. And this is part of walking in love. It is yielding to one another. And that is submission. New Testament submission is never forced It cannot be submission if it is forced. If you try to force someone to submit, and this is one of the problems in some marriages where a husband tries to force the wife to submit, then it is no longer submission. By definition, the word submission is voluntary. And it's only submission when it's voluntary. So if it becomes forced submission, it is no longer submission. It then becomes the spirit of control, which is witchcraft. We talked about that when we talked about the law of spiritual authority. When you try to demand and control others, 
You are operating in the spirit of control, which is witchcraft. So stop it. If that's you, if you try to control others, if you try to demand others do what you want, it is witchcraft and it is sin. And so, and that's particularly when you're talking about adults. And again, if we were to review the law of spiritual authority, you do have to require obedience from children because they're still in the training period of their lives until they become an adult. And therefore you require obedience. Obedience and submission are not the same. Obedience and submission are not the same. Obedience is you've got to do this. And then there is even punishment if you do not. But submission is voluntary yielding to the will of another to do the will of another or the desire of another. And so, yes, you do require your children to obey. And there are scriptures about even disciplining God disciplines us in Hebrews. It says God disciplines us for our own good. You should discipline your children. Why? Because it's a training. It's training them to do right. It's teaching and training and it is molding their behavior. And children will not grow up with proper behavior unless they are put in the mold. And so you mold their behavior by requiring obedience. But once they're adults, there you do not require and demand obedience of other adults. Because now as an adult, they are responsible for their own choices. They're responsible for their own decisions. Even if you think their choice is a wrong choice. Even if you think they're doing the wrong thing, you cannot force them to do your will. They have freedom of choice, freedom of will, and they will be responsible for their own choices. They will receive the results, the harvest and the judgment for their own choices and decisions. You cannot force other adults to do what you want them to do. And that includes husbands forcing wives to do what you want them to do because you say you have to submit. No, you are trying to require them to obey you. And that's a difference. It doesn't say wives obey. It says wives submit, which is voluntary. The definition of submission is voluntary yielding to the will or desire of another. And so you cannot require it of another person who is an adult because then it becomes the spirit of witchcraft, the spirit of control, which is witchcraft. So you don't require and demand other people to do what you want them to do when they are adults. Um, and so the, the, the yielding and the submission is voluntary. It is Voluntarily yielding to the desire or will of another person. And as I was saying, not only do wives submit to husbands, but as Christians, this is walking in love that we submit to one another. Ephesians 5 The chapter that talks about husbands and wives, verse 21 says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Submit to one another. So this is walking in love so that not even a husband has the right to always demand its own way. Because the opposite of submission is demanding. The opposite of submission is demanding and controlling what's around you and the people around you to do what you want all the time. And remember, let's go back to 1 Corinthians 
13, the great love chapter. And it says in verse, well, let's just read verses four and five again. You know, you should write these verses out on an index card or a piece of paper and keep them in front of you every day. Put it on your mirror, put it in, uh, in, you know, at your breakfast place, at your place at the breakfast table, put it on your dashboard in your car and read it over and over again every day. And this is in the Amplified Bible, Ephesians 4, I mean, verse 4, 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 1 Corinthians 13, 4. And five, love endures long and is patient and kind. Love is never envious or boils over with jealousy, is not boastful or vainglorious, does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not. This is verse five, does not insist, you could say demand, does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. It does not insist on its own rights or its own way, for it is not self-seeking. The Living Bible says love does not demand its own way. So Submission is not demanding your way, but yielding to the desire or will of another. And so love submits to one another. You know, we need to just think on that throughout the day. Don't try to demand your way. But yield to the will and desire of others around you. Love yields. Then let's go on. Philippians chapter two, verse three. And these are still the one another scriptures and each other scriptures in the New Testament. Philippians two, three. In humility, consider others better than yourselves. Consider others better than yourselves. That means to consider them above yourself. Before yourself. Ahead of yourself. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Colossians 3 16. Teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. 1 Thessalonians 4 18. 1 Thessalonians 4 18. Encourage each other. Encourage each other. So love encourages others. Love encourages others. Today, why don't you try to see how many times you can encourage other people around you. Encourage other people today. And then 1 Thessalonians 5.11. Build each other up. Build each other up. That's edify others. Build them up. That's part of encouraging Build them up for that's first Thessalonians 511 and then Hebrews 1024 Hebrews 1024 spur one another on toward love and good deeds. You know, there again is encouraging, encourage others, build others up, spur one another on toward love and good deeds. And then. We're just going through the New Testament here and not even grabbing every scripture. Let's go to the book of James, chapter four, verse 11. Do not slander one another. You never speak bad about others. James five, nine. Don't grumble against each other. Don't grumble against each other. James five, 16. Confess your sins to each other. Now, what does that mean? I believe it especially means when you have wronged somebody, you confess it to them, particularly to the person you have wronged. You say, I'm sorry, I did wrong. I was wrong. And then James 5.16 also says, and pray for each other. 
So you confess your sins to each other. You co- you confess when you acknowledge when you've wronged and you pray for each other. And then first Peter five, five, clothe yourselves with humility toward one another. There again, we see humility is part of walking in love. And then first John three, 14 through 16. First John three, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. You know, you have passed from death to life when you love your brothers. Anyone who does not love remains in death. Anyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life in him. Verse 16, this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. So here again, we see that we are passed from death to life because we walk in love. So I encourage you today to encourage other people around you, bless them, edify them, build them up, spur one another on, forgive others, serve others, honor others above yourself. Hallelujah. Be at peace with others. Walk in love toward others. Make it your commitment today. Now join me again tomorrow. And remember, God loves you. You're blessed and highly favored by the Lord.